Hi, um, a short video about how to fit guttering. Um, we are fitting a bit of guttering to uh, a workshop that we are building be behind me here. We've done one side over on the right hand side, you can see a close up of that in a second. But we're going to talk you through how we're going to put guttering along um, the fascia board that we fitted on one side of the shed. What you're going to need to fit guttering, the first thing is watch this video to see how it's done. Secondly, draw a diagram of your own guttering. There are lots of bits involved, so you can, by drawing a diagram, and if you look on our fitting guttering page on the website, it will show you how to work out which bits you need, okay? But, essentially, you'll need a spirit level, okay? You will need a box, or at least a handful of um, number eight inch and a quarter screws. A screwdriver of some kind. We prefer an electric screwdriver. Um, it's up to you. Uh, a saw. Now the saw when you finish guttering isn't going to be a lot of good for sawing timber. Uh, the plastic will blunt it. So use an old saw if you have one. Uh, a tape measure. A string line. Doesn't have to have a plumb bob on the end of it but we prefer to use it. I'll show you why in a moment. Um, and the fittings that we're going to use, let's, let's go through the names of them. This is a running outlet, so called because the water runs along it from either direction and goes out through the hole in the bottom. In this particular instance we are going to put a stop end on there and we're going to fit an internal stop end, so called because it fits into the running outlet and that just clips into place on the running outlet. We'll do that properly later on. The other type of stop end which goes on the other end of the gutter is an external stop end. So this one clips in, this one's already got the clips so that clips on. One goes in, one goes on. Okay, you'll see, so that's the running outlet. Incidentally you can buy a stop end outlet. So that comes with a stop end already in place. When you buy a stop end outlet, um, you can save some money. We never know quite know what we're going to do next, so we've got to we use the uh, the running outlet so that we can put the stop end on e either end. The gutter itself is held up by gutter brackets. They go into position, and the back gutter is clipped in afterwards. On the bottom of the stop end outlet, there will be some downpipe. Um, that comes in two or four meter lengths. When that's in place, the downpipe will need securing to the wall with downpipe brackets. So they fit into place there. Um, the 90 degree bend, there's a 90 degree bend. Um, there's also a, if you'll give me one second, there's also 45 degree bends, so we can form what we call a swan neck, something like that. Um, and there's also something which sits at the bottom of the downpipe to direct the water into the water butt and that is called a shoe. Okay, so there's some of the bits that we will be using today. There's lots of different pieces of guttering so please do yourself a diagram. The first thing that we're going to do, if I can ask the cameraman to follow me, is put our spirit level on the underside of our fascia board. to see which way that's running, okay? Now, as it happens, this fascia board is absolutely level, okay? So I know that if the water's gonna run down that way, as I want it to do towards the end of the shed where we just were, that the bracket at this end has to be higher than the bracket at that end. Now, water will find its own level, so it doesn't have to be a lot higher. Um, and probably for something like this, which is 12 foot long, it probably only needs to fall about three eighths of an inch to half an inch at the maximum and the water will find its way there. So the first thing that we do is to set up our bracket at that end. So let's go and do that. So we need to keep the bracket in from the end by about an inch and a half so that the gutter overhangs. And we need to, in this particular case, we need to lift that up as high as we can. The gutter will slip underneath into that little lug at the top. Okay, the camera's got that. Now that gives us about half an inch 
from the bottom of that bracket to the underside of the fascia board. Because the fascia board's level, if our final bracket is level with the bottom of this fascia board, we know we've got the required fall. So let's fix this one into position. Make sure it's, it's upright, it's vertical to the... Or rather perpendicular to the fascia board. So we know where that one's going to go. Now we're going to go up the other end. And we're going to fit another bracket at this end. Again, an inch and a half in from the end. And we already know from the calculation that we've done albeit a bit uh, written on the back of a cigarette packet but, but because we know the fascia board's level this bracket can go level with the underside of the fascia board. Uh, incidentally if you want to see how to fit a rubber roof as you can see that we have one here um, look at our video on fitting rubber roofs. Okay, so that's the end brackets fitted and what we're going to do now is get our string line and the reason that we have a plumb bob or it could be a stone or I've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of guys use a bolt just tied to the end especially when you're up on a scaffold a long way from the ground we loop the end of our line over there run it along to our first bracket Okay. And then using a bowline knot, tie that off, and then we have a string line which is going to tell us the height of the other brackets that we're going to put in place. When you're fitting guttering, brackets should be no more than one meter apart. So we you know the four meters flesh of guttering. So we know that we've got to get two in the middle of the two that we already have. So we'll get those equidistant. Put the tape on there. So that's 3.4. So we know that we can put two brackets at 800 millimeters or thereabouts. And we know that to be okay. What is dead handy here is that these panels are going to give us the right, going to give us the right distance. And we'll pinch this one. There we go. So we to the line. Lovely. Now we can undo the line. We have no further. First thing there. that we're going to fit um, is our running outlet. Um, the running outlet has holes in the back of it, as you can see, and they're designed so that we can fix the running outlet to the gutter. The mistake that people make, which is why that we fitted our brackets first, is that they think that these holes are a substitute for a bracket and to an extent they are. The problem is that just by fixing at the back here, there's no support at the front of the gutter and you'll see a lot of gutters leak because the running outlet is fixed there, but the weight of the gutter tilts it over that way. It stretches that joint, it stretches that joint, um, and eventually it stretches that joint. So that's the, the joints are the vulnerable parts of guttering. So what we're gonna do is instead of having this running outlet at the end of the roof, we're gonna move it back along the roof a little bit so a lot of people would fit this at the very end of the roof have the stop end there and just have this running outlet fitted through those two holes we're going to move ours back along a little bit along the roof we're going to have a piece of gutter cut in between there and the last bracket that we fitted and then we're going to join onto there and then run through so that we know we've got the extra support of a bracket near the running outlet. Okay, 
so that's how we're going to fit it so that we know that that running outlet isn't going to tilt down um, and stretch those joints and cause them to leak it's not going to go it's not going to go like that it's going to stay upright because of that extra bracket there so the first thing that we're going to do is measure if we say that we're going to set our running outlet in there we're going to say that we need now bearing in mind that we have to cut our gutter on the inside it clips into these brackets and it comes back to these two little lugs that stop us there so we when we cut our gutter we have to allow for the depth that that's in and that's exactly six inches or 150 millimeters so the next thing that we're going to do is cut a piece of guttering at 150 millimeters We're going to fit the gutter, making sure that our screw holes are facing the fascia. We're going to fit our gutter up into our brackets against the lugs in there and clip that into place. And you can see that's nice and strong. And on this end, of course, we need the external stop end. Clip that in the same way, push that up into the back bracket, the back clip, push the clip into position, sometimes they clip in immediately, other times they misbehave, and there we go, so that reassuring click shows you that's all in place and we know that our bracket is going to fit in. Put that up. The back of the gutter is going to clip up into that lug there and that is going to slot into place. Okay, now before we screw our running outlet, we get our tape measure and we measure the remaining length of gutter that we need. Bearing in mind that we're going to go up to our little lug, which is there, so that's 128 and a half inches in old money, there, and that gives us an overlap into our running outlet. So then we measure our gutter. Right, so now we take this down to our clips. Drop that into inside the gutter clips. Make sure we're inside all of them. Twist it so that we know we're up and under the clips. And then drop that into place as we go. Back up to our joint and that's the last clip into place and when we can see now that that running outlet is level it's then time to screw the running outlet to the fascia board through the holes what remains to do is to fit um, another external stop end at the other end there we go so that's our gutter fitted we know that it slopes from back to front um, and we know that it's solid because we've got a bracket every 800 millimeters we've got an extra bracket by the running outlet to stop that tilting forward and we know that all of our joints aren't going to move so the water's going to come off the roof into there and eventually out, out of the running outlet. To see how the water is taken from the running outlet to the downpipe and then to the water butt, please see part two of our guttering videos.